In this episode of Week to Wicked, Carcraft Magazine brought our build team this stock. 425 horsepower, 2006 Chrysler 300C SRT8 with over 100,000 miles. We'll have one week to use parts from rockauto.com to build this one-of-a-kind, smog-legal, daily driver hot rod that will cost a fraction of a used Hellcat or ZL1. Enter to win this completed car at hotrod.com slash W2W. All right, so it's the morning of day one, and we're starting off with something a little bit different, a modern car. We got a whole lot of stuff to throw at it from power additives, suspension, brakes, but before we do that, we need to take this thing for a drive. I want to see how it feels, kind of see what kind of power we're working with. So Johnny, what do you say we get in this thing and take it out? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it, man. We'll see how uh, you like it. I remember when these things came out, I was so excited that Chrysler was making rear-wheel drive platform cars again. Yep. It was like, well, we get to go back to the old days again now. You, with CarCraft, what was your vision behind this particular car? Well, I've always wanted one of these cars, and I always kind of felt that Chrysler was left out. Chrysler never got a Hellcat engine. Mm -hmm. And so here we have a chance to take an SRTA and put a blower on it and kind of get in that Hellcat uh, range, if sure. you will. It's not going to be quite 707 horsepower, but it'll be pretty darn close. Yeah. I've always wanted to build a car like this because, you know, uh, it's 12 years old. Mm -hmm. They're perfect for uh, grabbing a, a really inexpensive car that you can not only hot rod, but you can drive it every day. Sure. We're gonna, it's going to be 50 state legal when we're done. Right. Yeah, and that's it. Like you said, it, it's a car that the upgrades we're putting on this car is not like, okay, it's a weekend only car. You can still drive this to work every day. Yeah. Pull in and get gas anywhere you want. Oh, absolutely. So basically what you're telling me is when you sit down and you got your pie and that waitress looks at you and says, you know what, I'm gonna put an extra cherry on top for you guys. Yeah, right. Is that kind of what we're doing here? That's exactly what we're doing, Jason. All right, well. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely got horsepower. It's got some power, man. You know, it's got some snot under the hood. I'm, I'm used to starting off these cars with, you know, Nothing. an old classic truck or something that, you know, barely gets out of its own way. And there's certainly people behind me honking their horns because they want to go around me. But exactly. I'm not going to let them around me because the steering's so loose yeah. that I'm kind of all over the road. You're, it's wandering. It's just sort of guiding it. Yeah. Well, one thing I know for sure, it's got a solid platform to start with. So. We're good there. We know the car runs before we started. <laughs> that's so always it, a plus. If, if it doesn't run afterwards, it's definitely not the car's fault. Yeah, that's true. It'd be our fault, but it's going to run great. So we're going to disconnect the ground. We gotta disconnect the lights. Okay, so we got all these to do. Yeah, it says to get the cover off. Oh, the washers. All right, so we're starting off with the blower today. Um, we had to take the front fascia off just because we got a water to air intercooler, which is gonna take the air temps from the forced air on the supercharger and cool them down. So, let's get started. Oh, that's stinky. Oh, it just wraps around it. Uh, just yeah, it goes like under it. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Thank you, sir. Oh man, those are tight. Tight on there, huh? Yeah. Let me get it. I think we're just gonna try to move it away. The reason I put Christian in charge of day one is I knew there'd be a lot of coolant dripping. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be anywhere near it. <laughs> dripping all right. Oh, there it goes! Whee! 
Oh, oh. Yeah, just like it said it would. Okay, let's let's put this over. Pick the. What am I gonna do with that? Stick on the top end of it. You are crazy. Oh. Wait. <laughs> Dude, what is wrong with you? And it says to uh, throw in the stock bolt. Yep. All right, so the kit comes with a little die here that goes onto the crankshaft itself, held together with the stock bolt. And what Christian's gonna do, he's gonna drill a hole through the crankshaft. This is for the added horsepower that the supercharger's gonna put off. It's gonna, it's gonna prevent the crank pulley from spinning on the actual crankshaft. So he's gonna go ahead and drill it, and we'll pin it, put the crankshaft pulley on there, and we'll be good to go. The battery going on this thing? Okay, let me get battery. <laughs> pull it out. <laughs> well, I broke, I broke the drill bit inside the jig. The drill bit's like this long and it twisted real easy. So, let's just take this thing and let me mark this thing, I'll take it off. Let me get a good drill bit. All right. So this pulley already has the keyway cut in it. And what we just did was drilled the hole with the little die they gave us, which this push pin is in there now. And that will slide through that keyway, prevent this from spinning with the extra horsepower. We can take that off too. I'm just going through what the book is telling me. No, that's fine. Move. Let's go step by step. We put in different injectors, bigger injectors? Yes. There you go. I need a light over here, sorry. Where's my light? Yeah, those. <laughs> Let me see. There we go. Telling me here the intake manifold can now be removed along with the you EVAP hose. We're gonna have to change up this line later too. Do we? Yeah, it's, it tells me. I remember reading about it. Okay, let's clean up this stuff before anything falls down those ports. Yeah. All right, the guys are getting ready to throw the supercharger on, and obviously with all that forced air, we're gonna have to uh, add more fuel. The kit comes with uh, new fuel rails, okay, bigger injectors, and a fuel pump, so let's get busy. I'm gonna print. Maybe I'll adjust my gasket here. Oh, I broke some. <laughs> Just kidding. This is provided in the kit. These are little sliders, and they actually go underneath the snout of the blower to add a little bit of support for the overhang. So you just kind of snug them up in there. Once it's touching, tighten them up. You're good to go. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. Right under that. And how about it? I think your sign is to. Yeah. 
put it in. Like this line would be real easy to put on before. <laughs> Let me do this one. I want to hear that. I just want to hear that sound. Okay, there's that. That grommet was catching. I gave you the easy side. Okay, go on. So here it says... Up on top like that, just like that. Okay. I mean, I guess if you wanted to really fine tune it, you could. I don't know, I've never done one. Oh man, it's already coming off. There. Found it? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, that's about how you gotta do it. Okay, so that's connected now. All right, so it's the end of day one. Superchargers installed, intercoolers plumbed. We've got a few loose ends to wrap up tomorrow morning, but we're looking pretty good. And then we'll head into suspension. Well, it's day two, and Edelbrock supplies this little uh, pigtail that you can uh, extend one of the wires behind the blower so you can make it to the sensor. And uh, Christian overlooked that and cut the wire so we could lengthen it. And then when he went to plug it in, it didn't fit because the adapter has a different plug on it. All he had to do is plug it in, he would have been done, but now he's trying to fight the wires behind the blower. How's that going for you? Getting yeah, it's getting there, it ain't getting there. So, this is beginning of day two. And uh, we're gonna wrap up the blower, start some suspension, get this car uh, moving along, so let's get going. You get one of the wires on yet, Christian? I'm done. You did it? I did it. You got all of them? All of them. Well, take my stopwatch off because you did it a lot quicker than I thought he could do. You proved me wrong. He was better than I thought he would be. Christian's the leader. Christian's reading the instructions. What's it say, Christian? Route the power supply wire on the water pump harness over to the power stud okay. on the fuse box. Okay. Which is here. Well, naturally it's on the car. This is just a picture yes. of it. <laughs> so we can't plug it into the actual instructions. <laughs> we gotta do that on the car. Yeah, we gotta do that. First. Okay. To the fuse box. With that orange wire. Nothing gets caught. Done. Okay, Christian, you got the wing on there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pull the wing off, I got one that will look better. <laughs> Done. Hey, look at that. Okay, can you take it out your side? Jeremy, yeah. can you put it? Actually, we're good. No, you're good. Yeah. Free change! Ugh, oh, touch something sticky. Is that where the pump is? Yep. Right here. Give me a, a chisel. Not a screwdriver, dude. What, a chisel? Yeah. Attach a half inch drive breaker bar to the, the lock ring. It's a lock ring. Oh. Oh. The tank is full. Um, should I just get a drain bucket in the bottom? Is it just leaking right now? That's what it sounds like. Go get something. Hold the press on that. Okay. Ain't gonna pump unless you hold it. I right know, it's because it pumps away. There you go. 
Pump it out. Oh. This thing right here, man. Better off if you just put it right up here and get you one of them, one of these, one of these things right here, like this. And you need a tow hook down there, a big old red one. Tow hook, lots of air extractors in the back. Oh, where's another 34 horsepower? Do me uh, a favor, do not edit any of that out. <laughs> so we gotta remove these lines here. How do we remove them? And the connector. I need a mask. Can we get a flashlight in here, stat? Now I know what happened to Johnny. <laughs> he must have been in this car for a while. So what Christian is doing is with our uh, new blower we have up there, putting a little better fuel pump in there. So Petty's Garage, I guess, has given us a uh, new fuel pump that we're gonna replace the stock one with. Should be a little stronger, and it's certainly a lot newer. Oh my God, I got it in my eye. <laughs> he got it in his eye. <laughs> I'll help you. No. No, you gotta use the eye wash. Did you get it? <laughs> God, he's trying yeah, get to- Get over here. No, you just splashed my face. No, get over here. <laughs> just, just get your head back in there. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's going all the way over there. Whoa. <laughs> This one's easy to get to with the bumper cover off. Yeah, that's why we figured we better do it now. <laughs> Tom's done this way too many times. Look how quick that was. <laughs> so this new one has some LED daytime running lights. We'll have to wire in and then it's the original connectors just plug right in. Now that we've finished up the, uh, the blower to make more power, we're gonna turn our attention to the suspension. Uh, we've got some really cool uh, struts from Petty's Garage we're gonna put on. So first thing we gotta do is remove the, the sway bar linkage, and then we're gonna get this stock unit out. We're gonna get the uh, adjustable strut in there, and it's really gonna make a difference in the way this car handles. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull that ball joint up. Just keeps aiming that sucker in there. Yeah! I'll put my weight on it. Okay. And then you pull it out from the top. And you see here. Good. Now will you look Ow. at that? Go ahead, it down. There you go. Just like that. Right now we're getting to the sway bar up front, which is located behind the cross member here. And uh, it's got a little heat shield on it to uh, keep the heat away from the rubber. So we'll take those off, take the clamps Easy. off, Easy. pull it out. All right, and then we will take this to the bench. Okay. Remove the end links. Cause I'm gonna love you. To the heavens store. Bum 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 ba bum bum ba bum ba da da. You jelly? Well, it's the end of day two, and the front fascia is going back on the car. Made good timing today. Feel really good about our progress. Stay tuned tomorrow. You gotta come my way, or? All right, it's Wednesday hump day. That's a good thing. We got a few things to wrap up for today's uh, build. We're gonna do front brakes, rear brakes, and we got the rear suspension. So let's get cracking. 
I like how I leave and Christian starts to work. <laughs> that was good, actually. We got locked together somehow. All right, Tom, here we go. This is our helpful All right. example. Oh, wow. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> I'm third generation car nut. My uh, grandfather's and my, uh, my father worked for General Motors when they started out their careers. And my brother and sister-in-law started out at General Motors. I started out at Chrysler. So yeah, cars were always real important to us. Those would go into the... They're like wear detectors or something? Or? These would be... Yeah, these don't even have a tab for them. Where the, yeah, because if you... See, these are the kind that usually they pop in yeah. from the inside. Yeah. So these, I think, they're just, they're just giving you styles. options. Yeah. Okay. So you're just using this one. The motivation behind starting rockauto.com was kind of based on that, this love of cars. We, we had a lot of experience going into traditional auto parts stores, and we were always often frustrated. Could we just jump over the counter and get access to the computer the counter person's looking at? Could we look through all those catalogs? Because even if you had the best counter person, they may just not have time, or they, they want to sell what they happen to have on their shelf versus give you the options of different brands and stuff. So we wanted to open that up to everybody so you could jump behind the counter, see what all the parts that were available, and, and also have um, prices be reliably low so you could afford to keep your daily driver or your project car on the road. I've actually seen a rotor fall on a dude's foot before, and it was a diesel truck. <laughs> okay, I think we're safe to let go. And uh, I'm gonna cinch her up. It's been really fun to work on this project car because when I worked at Chrysler in the 80s, it was K-car based, everything was front wheel drive, and or except for the trucks. I always thought about, hey, it'd be fun to bring back the old 60s rear wheel drive V8, and so Chrysler did that after I was gone, and it's fun to work on those cars now. You know what I think we disconnected this huh? Was to keep it from leaking. Oh, so it wouldn't be a perpetual drip? Yeah, from the other line. Place that over there. How many times have you shocked yourself with the battery? Uh, not many. <laughs> but I have, I'm gonna say half a dozen. I have gotten a lot of battery acid on me. Oh, that's not fun. Burns. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. And then this thing literally just just pops out. Yeah, it should just pop out. I need to compress it a little bit, maybe. Push it down. Almost. Oh wow, that's a big nut. It looks easy. Almost. Almost. Don't move it too much. Now pull it back. There you go. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're gonna hit the fender. Oh yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, just drop the rotor. Yeah. Instead of fighting it. Fighting it. But we're not doing caliper, so just don't don't take the line off. Just let the hang. Just the, let it hang somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a flex line right here, so. No, you don't. The good intentions of Biscardo, you can tell he's been working on something he probably shouldn't have because it's all over his face, it's all over his arms, it's in areas that you just normally wouldn't get that dirt in. John, you got a little something right here. Right, right here? Yeah, there. You go. I got it? Yeah. Oh right. my. Up here? Yeah. I gotta get back to my laptop. This is, oh, look at that, look at that. Is that extra dirt? Yeah, see, so, yeah, I was helping. Did things. Okay. So let's just drop it from here. What the f are that? So I guess that's a muffler to the catalyst. Catalytic converter. So let's just pull the exhaust system out then. Yeah. And, and then, then we'll drop the subframe. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting something here. Yep. And then one, two, three, four bolts, drop it a little bit, and then just slide it out. It's what it's saying. All right, let's do that. Let's 
It's still welded up there. This Is thing. It? All right, let me cut it. Are you cutting through that thing or what? Yeah. <laughs> Go, Christian. I want to see that sweat. Got <laughs> <laughs> a little backfire back there. You hear that exhaust? That went right through the muffler. <laughs> <laughs> Why the f did I even go back there? <laughs> Dude, you rocked right into the cloud. He is never going to learn that one. I get you with that at least weekly. Is it moving? Swing, better, better, swing! It's coming! Oh, that's what I didn't want. We're trying to get the rear sway bar out. And uh, as you can see, we got a lot of the suspension off and brake system, which we're going to replace. So. We have to take all that off anyways, and uh, now we gotta drop, drop the subframe a couple inches to get the sway bar out, get the new one in, and uh, get going. We just gotta be gentle. Yeah, careful, right careful, yep. Boom. Do you have the bolts still on that side over there? Yeah, both of those bolts are still on over there. So, this is a pretty cool setup. Stock spring comes out not adjustable, it's just the way it is. They provided another spring, quite a bit shorter, but you have this adjuster, so now you can adjust ride height and uh, spring rate. It's not a coil over because it's not, you don't have your shock and your coil all as one, but you still have an adjustable shock that's gonna go on the outside in the stock location, and then you got your spring here that's fully adjustable. Go ahead, you're good. Keep going, keep going. Okay, all the way. All right, so I'm gonna compress the shock, get it in there quickly, and it's gonna respring and back into its place. So um, let me do that. This takes a little bit of oomph. Just let it. out of your way. So we're gonna use the stock calipers. I'll get something to bust these out of the old ones. Okay. And then we'll put in the new pads and pins. Yeah, might as well just mount them up and then we can just work around it. That way we don't, you know, I won't have to be holding it all crazy. We just make it like this. That's nice the power stop pads have a little wear sensor that the original ones didn't. It'll make noise if it rubs. And we need the, where do we put the clip on? The, um, I think you can get them on. Oh yeah, then, we kind of bent it or yeah. sprung it in there. Make sure they go up that way, not the other way? No, they go this way. Okay. The other side's smaller in diameter. Okay. Oh, you put them in? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were trying to take it out. No, no, we're putting okay. them in. All right, now we can remove this, get the rotor on there. The old All right. Looks like it belongs there. All right, so it's the end of day three, and we're cutting out a little bit early. We're going to come back in tomorrow, finish up the car. It'll be the first time we finally get it done before Friday. That way we can take the car down to the beach and enjoy it. All right, so it's day four, and we're gonna complete this car today, so we got a whole bunch of fun stuff to do tomorrow. What's left? Uh, today we got rear shock tire brace. We gotta finish that up from yesterday. Uh, we banged out the exhaust yesterday. We gotta get the new stuff in. We did what? Banged it out. Oh, bang, okay. Yeah, remember you were like smashing the crap out of it? Okay. Uh, gotta do tail lights. Yep. Gotta finish up the front tail lights. 
The front tail lights. Yeah, we gotta finish so up. So we the... got front tail lights now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, keep going. The <laughs> front lights. Gotta finish those up. Okay. Uh, we gotta finish dressing up the blower up top. Uh, do some uh, fluid fluid swap on the brakes. Yep. Bleed the brakes. Yep. Uh, oil change. Okay. Um, and keep going on from there. What do you mean going from there? What else do we have left? We're trying to give the audience a little details um, on what we have left. Well, I'm trying to remember. Windshield wipers. Uh huh. Cabin air filter. Okay. Um. I mean, that seems like today's that, that everything. I mean, can you think of anything else? Uh, you're the leader. I just need direction on what to do. Well, I think that's the big majority of it. All right, well, let's get started on the front tail lights and uh, we'll <laughs> go from there. Let's do it. Keep cracking. <laughs> I gotta take this thing out first. I was test fitting. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty sweet, right? So what's this gonna do, Christian, for us? This is gonna strengthen, straighten the back when you're going into turns. Yep. And all that. It's reinforcing everything. Yep. Over here, because it's a unibody. It's not a frame. And Christian. Yes. I've been reading some of the comments on YouTube. Am I? A little bit. Sometimes, but that's cool. I am. Once in a while. What do I do? I don't know. You make me work. <laughs> so I, I hire this guy. I bring him to this beautiful shop this is beautiful. and make him work. Yeah. And I'm an asshole. No. You just said I was. A I did. Yeah. I'm pretty nice to you. You're nice. You're You're a nice guy. guy. You're a good guy. This is my buddy. And what I'm doing is teaching him how to build cars in a different way than he's used to. He comes from dealerships, and I built hot rods for a long time, and I'm trying to mold him into a hot rod builder. So guys, I'm not a <laughs> I'm just the boss. He's my boss. Does that fit? Yep. Tail lights? Tail lights. They're pretty easy. They just got like uh, wing nuts in the back of them. Gotcha. So. That falls right pretty good. And we'll get that top clip in there and it'll pull it in. Yep. But we gotta get the interior in first. Two. What do we have to cut the interior? Yeah, that right there. Mm -hmm. Alright, why don't we go lay this out somewhere? Some of the floor too, I think. Okay. I'll take these over. Lay out right here. I'll bring the floor. So we just center it up on here then? Yep, we center it up. And that's what it looks like right there. They cut out that All right, let's get a take part. Six and seven eighths. Six and seven eighths, yeah, we're good right there. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's perfect. All right, let's do the sides. That's the very top of the hole, so it can go like that. Okay. And then you're split. It's just one slit. Yep. Man, how'd you do that? What do you mean? Did you fight the last one? Yeah, it fought me all day. <laughs> Got those in. Um, Want to do exhaust next? Do it. All right. You're the boss, man. Okay, I like how they're fitting. Let's get a pole jack over here. Oh, what? That's have a, a seat. That's a Packers. Have a seat. I'm a Rams fan. Just have a seat. I want you to watch me work today a little bit. Oh, wow. I've never, this has never happened before. Oh, now come on! Don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to worry about the drive shaft interfering? No. Why not? Why not? Because it's. Um... How often does this move up and down? Stationary. Why? Because this is a fixed rear end. It's independent rear suspension. Yep. It only moves right here. 
Nothing right here. All right. Yeah? Got it. Cool. See? So we don't have to worry about it interfering. We can go just about hitting that drive shaft. I mean, we're about two and a half inches away from it. We're even. It's never going to move. Never going to move. That's what I wanted you to say. Okay. Oh, I see now because it's bolted up to the cradle back here. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I can't stay sitting down all day. That's just not me. You don't need to weld the system up. It's got clamps that are capable of holding it. Um, I just like to put some pack welds on all the inlets and outlets just so there's a little security there. That way it never moves. Everything's nice and straight. And if you just put a couple tacks on there, it will stay nice and straight. Right, Christian? Yes, it will. <laughs> round and round and round and round we go again. Are you thirsty, little buddy? Just drink. All right, let's get this out of the way. Let's stage our oil leak, <laughs> our major oil leak. Man, that is black. Looks like we're making a pancake. We need more oil. That's not enough. Yeah. Shit. So they're gonna, they're gonna tell Viscardo that the engine blew up. When you were in there just about 10 minutes ago, see it it's coming all out inside the pan? What? What are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I wish. The fuel pump was running on. Remember we put a new fuel pump in? Yeah, yeah. Well, somehow the wires were crossed, so it, can, it ran continuously, filling the engine up with uh, gas. So when the gas filled up and we went to ignite it, it hydrolocked. Okay. And push the piston out. Okay. I don't know what to do. Oh man, I don't know what to do. We've never had when a did... motor blow up. All right. All right. Oh. So what happened when you turned it on? It just popped. And it it just popped. Once it ignited, the cylinders were full of fuel, and it when the piston came up, yep. there was nowhere for it to go because it was full of fluid and blew the side of the wall, the side of the block out. Like, drama, real drama, okay. Well, this is the worst drama. We got it, we got it. Let's just think this out. You think we could call Tom up and get like another 6.1 liter short block? And he could work overnight and, and they could maybe put it in? Yeah, I can do that. I'll, I'll work all night. Well, we have all day tomorrow too. Let's, let's, all right. All right, Tom at Rock Auto. Someone, yeah. we need, just somehow get an he engine here. could probably here. get us an engine, man. Today? Well, I mean, you could start today and like have it, like you could buy so, air freight all right, it over. All right, that's an option. How about we just clean up this oil that we threw on the ground on purpose to see what you would do? Ha! <laughs> 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 you! <laughs> you! I knew something was up. Yeah. <laughs> Revenge is coming. Come on, come on. Phew! Two for two right there, boy. Ow. Oh, dang, dude! So right now we're just uh, sucking out the brake fluid with a syringe. You can see it's pretty dirty, and it smells really bad, so. And you don't want to get any of this on your paint, because it will eat it up. And if you ever do, Make sure you throw some water on it right away. It'll dilute it pretty quick. So yesterday, we weren't paying attention. Well, I wasn't paying attention. And um, we put the calipers on the wrong side. As you can see, the bleeder is in the bottom. Air is trapped up top, so there's no way you're gonna get air out. So we're swapping them out right now. Can you go ahead? I'm holding. <laughs> install standard tune. No, install custom tune. Okay, let's just see what that does. Edelbrock E4 special tune, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a leak? Back here. What'd you do now, Christian? I didn't do anything. It's, it's... Lifted her up. 
Well, it's leaking from a fuel source from a, the fuel pump. Okay. You put a screw through it, didn't you? No way. You put a screw through a fuel line. Oh, fucking fool right here, man. Maybe this is not clipped on right. Look. It's broke. What? Somebody must have sat down right here. Yep. It's plastic. Who is sitting back here? We found the problem. It was me. Well, he didn't know. We're gonna tell this was the camera guy's fault on this one. Your butt broke the line. <laughs> what? It's a pizza. This is what transfers the fuel from one tank to the other. What? We gotta get it. So we need we need one of these. And that I don't know if we're gonna be able to find. Camera guy will do anything to get on TV. <laughs> Or YouTube or whatever this is going on. We're there. Let's go wait till the park comes in, we good. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Hold on, it's gonna. Get my proper square knot, dude. You need a good square knot because it won't come loose. This guy, this guy doesn't look good, bro. Dude, son, your method work, dude. I'm proud of you. Cool. Plug her in. Can you hear the pump back there running? Yeah, I hear this pump running. Everything's dry up here. Everything's dry up here too, dude. Okay. All right, so we're wrapping up our Thursday. Uh, car's pretty much done. We got wheels and tires in the morning and then Jeff Styles is coming in to do some striping. But other than that, we're finished. Um, before I started, I wanna put a fuel gauge up on the fuel rail to check fuel pressure, but we need an adapter, which we're gonna pick up in the morning and then I can hook that up before our initial fire up. But yeah, once we check fuel pressure, we'll start the car up, get the wheels and tires on this thing, get some striping done, take it out. All right, so it's the morning of day five, Friday, and uh, we finally got our adapter for our fuel gauge, so we're gonna check fuel pressure. That way we know where we're at, so when we start the car for the first time, we're good to go. All right, turn the key on. So we're about 56 PSI, which is perfect. Um, so we're good there. Uh, we also have Jeff Styles here. He's gonna come in and pinstripe the car, so we're gonna do that first. We're gonna do wheels and tires after that, and then we're gonna fire the car up for the first time, so let's get going. So I see we have a decal, we got some badges out. Yep. Uh, it's to the point of let's just discuss what I'm going to do. Right, you right, know? yeah. So my head's already turning. So with the decal right there, mm -hmm. that's obviously going on the hood. Right. So what I see here is, you know, from a thin stripe to a wider stripe, right. which would really be cool on this 300 to do on the side. Oh, that's a great idea. We'll Just, go thin yeah. to thick. We'll pick one of these badges, stick in the middle, mm -hmm. which will tie the rest of the car together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll match the color to it. You guys have taken the hard work out of the thought process already. You're welcome. So <laughs> with that, with this, with that, all we gotta do is make those brushes wet and do it. So what did you use? the intimidation goes way down for somebody mm -hmm that wants to practice, you can practice on any surface. Right. Wipe it off, stripe it, wipe it off, stripe it, wipe it off. So you look, so you If love you it. make a mistake, I still make mistakes. <laughs>so Jeff just finished up pinstriping the car. I think we're about ready to fire this thing up for the first time now that we know fuel pressure is good to go. That was easy. I mean, the only mods we did was the supercharger, so. Nice. How's fuel pressure? 
It's around 60 right now. All right, everything looks good. Everything looks good up here. No smoke, no water, no leaks. Hey, what is that? What's that? <laughs> Couldn't resist. Crazy. So we're good to go. Yeah, we're good. Put some wheels on this thing, take it out. Who rubbed the pinstripe up front? Someone already rubbed the pinstripe up on both sides. All right, the back one's still good. Shift it in nice and tight. So we got Jeff out here, obviously, to do the stripes, and I just went around blaming everyone for getting into the stripes before I looked at my own knee. It actually was me who got into the stripes, so luckily Jeff still likes me and he's still here and he can fix us up. <laughs> What kind of person leans on a car and breaks it? <laughs> right? Yeah. I grazed it, didn't lean on it. <laughs> well, we're gonna replace the filter here. This is the cabin filter. We got a couple of little things we need to do. Uh, to bring it up to snuff, this is like normal stuff. The cabin filter is located behind this hatch right here. And this one, whoa, look at this. It's, it's got a date on it, February 18th, 2015. Well, I'd say it's about time to get replaced. Put it right in there, you gotta pay attention to the direction of the, the flow. Put it on like that. So the load was a little lighter on this build, which I like. Gives us plenty of time to unveil the car, bring it down to Pacific Coast Highway for a drive. Of course, you, you didn't have this off. No, I, it caught itself. It caught itself. Well, it's definitely got a lot more power than it did. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you gotta love a car like this, man. You could buy one of these things 12 years old, and then bam, put a blower on it, do some graphics, wheels, tires, suspension, brakes. Simple stuff. Simple stuff, low hanging fruit. And you know what? That's why you know it took us four days to kind of get the car situated. No real big hiccups. Yeah. Here we are driving down PCH. PCH, day finished early. Yeah. It's amazing. You could probably build this car for 25 grand. I mean, what do we have in it? I mean, it's, I mean, it's a really good looking car. We're getting a lot of head turning. Yep. And it, it, it looks fantastic. It runs great, it sounds great. Um, definitely got horsepower. Yeah, it's definitely got horsepower and a great sound to go with it yep. too. Oh yeah. Oh. Man, I wish this was mine. I want to win it. <laughs> I want to win it. I'm going to have to buy one and build it too. 